um, sorry, yes, um, carry out, um, I'm going to do Unit 18 BTEC, uh, Faraday's Laws of EMI, it's for physics students, a lot of abbreviations will be used here, so please um, stay with me. So I'm going to talk about Faraday's Law of EMI, and uh, it's uh, all about induction, uh, you know, coil, um, magnetized, uh, electromagnet. You know, it's, it's, it's basically about a moving coil uh, galvanometer, milliampere, uh, uh, ammeter, uh, and it's just uh, the concept of driving a magnet in and out of a, a metal um, coil connected to an ammeter, milliammeter, um, millivolt meter, galvanometer, moving coil galvan galvanometer, so MCG and MA, right? The induced voltage, which is induced when the metal bar or the mag magnetic coil, which has a field of a B field around it, orthogonal B field, the E field, B field are orthogonal to each other. The magnet has a surrounding concentric ellipsoid B field around its, um, you know, body, and those lines, B field lines, um, when they get cut, intercepted by the uh, coil, cross-sectional area of the coil, it generates flux, and the the generated voltage as a result of that flux in in that coil is directly proportional to the product of the number of loops product of the number of loops n and the rate at which the magnetic flux, flux changes within these loops rate at which b flux changes within these loops which is b a over t so b field times the cross sectional area as i just mentioned um, and a, a movement across the solenoid into the solenoid into the page out of the page divided by the time which is the rate right so the first one is uh, emi faraday's law of emi number one n brackets open b a cos theta so it's mostly cos theta not sine theta sine theta is quite rare and uh, and then because usually sine forty five doesn't yield anything sine sixty sine forty five it it yields very small so it's usually cos forty five cos sixty cos ninety right so and then b a divided by t t is in milliseconds seconds what have you because we've got a moving coil galvanometer which is in a milliammeter it, it's going to be in milliseconds <laughs> this law states that an emf is generated if the magnetic flux changes for any reason okay. And um, all of these factors can affect the rate of change of the flux. So change in B field, which is Henry, Tesla, right? It can affect it. Um, area change of the cross-sectional area of the solenoid can affect it. Uh, and then the time. If it if you're moving it slow, then the change. So time is. Uh, inversely proportional uh, to E field so so smaller the time higher the generated flux if we increase the time then the generated flux uh, as a function of the number of uh, turns and the B field and the area cross-sectional area would reduce okay but if you since B a is a B field is directly proportional stronger the magnet higher the generated flux weaker the magnet lower the generated flux small um, higher the cross-sectional area of the magnet um, uh, higher the coincidence of the area of the cross-sectional area of the magnet with the solenoid higher the flux so the tighter fitting magnet into a solenoid greater the flux capacitance generation a higher number of uh, field lines cut off by the solenoid and greater the generated flux, all right? So now we'll look at the question. A flat coil of wire has an area of 0 0.02 meter squared and consists of 50 turns at n equals 50. At t equals not, not seconds, uh, t1 is orthogonal, 
normal means perpendicular remember that it's perpendicular normal doesn't mean normal it means perpendicular in refraction reflection um, and in B field e, e, e field B field in physics normal means perpendicular please don't come to me saying the normal means average or you know lying flat adjacent it means perpendicular you should know that by now to its surface is parallel okay so the angle is zero the relative angle is zero because it's parallel and normal so it's zero to a constant b field of 0.18 tesla the coil is then rotated uh, through an angle of 30 degrees so the cost 30 it'll be cost 30 and the time will be 0.1 so the time differential will be 0.1 minus not point uh, not so uh, the time differential delta t would be 0.1 um, the cost theta would be cost 30 degrees and then it'll be it'll be uh, so this is what you'll do um, uh, 0.18 Tesla times 0.02 meter squared bracket open cost 30 bracket close divided by 0.1 and you get minus 0.24 which is away from away from the magnet so the generation of the voltage will be away from the magnet this is what uh, 0.24 means anti-clockwise and um, yeah lenses law lenses law is about your right palm take your right palm uh, corkscrew uh, your fingers and the, th the current would travel in the direction of the thumb pointing upwards or downwards all right so an EM EMR EMF generates a current which induces a counter magnetic field which opposes a change in the B field generating the current so it's a bit like uh, equilibrium analysis reaction kinetics except it's to do with B field and this is a link I've put in here for you magnet.fsu.edu these are American uh, websites very very useful you can download it copy paste it download it as a PDF and then revise from it an induced EMF drives current I equals uh, uh, I naught sine uh, uh, 2 pi ft around the circuit just as the EMF of the battery does all right so, but EMF is a lot smaller EMF is uh, e equals uh, I small r the battery conventional current d DC currents directed out of the positive through the attached wire into the negative right this is true for EMF but the location of the positive and negative terminals is not as obvious so it's quite a mystery bit of a mystery EMF is always been a bit of a mystery to determine the location of the positive and negative terminals, i.e. direction of current, it's important to remember that there are two B fields in these situations. One generated by the original summative overall B field, and the second one is induced um, uh, B field, which is a component of the induced current, right? So Lenz's law um, states a polarity from the induced EMF is first found by knowing the induced B field opposes the original flux change. No, it doesn't oppose the original flux. It opposes the original flux change. So the ch it opposes the change in the original flux. And um, then you use the Fleming's right-hand rule. And if the fingers point in direction of induced magnetic field and coil, and the thumb points in the direction of the induced current. So, that, that, so that's how it is. Remember that uh, right-hand rule for generators, left-hand rule for motors. This is the diagram. Look at the diagram quickly, please, properly. Look at it nicely. Induced magnetic field opposed to the original flux. Using the right hand rule. So now we'll read about Lenz's law. When an EMF is generated by a change in B field, B flux, according to the Faraday's law, the polarity of the induced EMF is such that it produces a current whose B field opposes the change in which produces it. So it's a push and pull kind of a thing. The reversion, constant reversion, this is how the motors uh, uh, utilize this, this principle to keep rotating around the brush commutators. The induced magnetic field inside the loop always acts to keep the B field in the loop constant. Um, and you can look at these diagrams, right? When you take the magnet north pole, North Pole is uh, anti-clockwise, South Pole is clockwise, and clockwise, clockwise attract, not anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise attract, anti-clockwise, clockwise repels. I know it's against the conventional Cartesian 
um, uh, uh, you know, cultural uh, norms, but it's, uh, you know, it's not, it's, it's, it, this is how it is, what I've just spoken is absolutely correct, so, and now in the first uh, figure, first figure on the left, top left, you see uh, an anti-clockwise magnet going down into um, an anti-clockwise uh, circuit, so it, it'll be a, uh, an attraction, the current would be induced that way, um, outward, according to uh, uh, the Fleming's left-hand rule. The second one, it's it's an anti-clockwise going into a clockwise, so the, uh, in, the current would be induced away from the coil. This one is a, a clockwise circuit into an anti-clockwise, so that it would be the current uh, B-field induction would be opposite. And so you can apply the uh, left-hand rule in order to find out the field, current, and thrust, the force. Um, and then in the last one here, bottom right, you see the uh, clockwise uh, magnet uh, face going into a clockwise. So so the induction of the B field would be away. Right, so whenever it's a clockwise into an anti-clockwise, um, yeah, whenever it's an uh, anti-clockwise into an anti-clockwise, the, the current B field generated outward. When it's uh, an anti-clockwise into a clockwise, uh, it's generated away from the coil. Whenever it's um, outward of the coil, away from the magnet. So whenever, so again, um, an um, anti-clockwise uh, pole into an anti-clockwise uh, 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 coil, uh, the current would be generated towards the magnet. Uh, uh, number two, bottom left, um, anti-clockwise uh, uh, B field into a clockwise uh, solenoid circuit the uh, B field induced would be away from the magnet. Then the south pole is a clockwise magnet field lines going into an anti-clockwise solenoid circuit leading to an induction of B field into towards the magnet. Then you have the south uh, pole which is clockwise uh, magnetic field lines, B field lines going into a clockwise uh, solenoid circuit and so again we see um, it, the induction of the B field would be away from the magnet so anti so anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise and uh, anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise uh, and then uh, you know uh, it's uh, towards the magnet anti-clockwise uh, in the bottom right uh, bottom left sorry anti so uh, top left uh, anti-clockwise anti-clockwise towards the magnet uh, second uh, bottom uh, 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 left uh, anti-clockwise clockwise away from the mag magnet uh, clockwise anti-clockwise towards the magnet clockwise clockwise away from the magnet right so north south pole is anti-clockwise North Pole is anti-clockwise, uh, uh, South Pole is clockwise, anti uh, North Pole is anti-clockwise, and uh, um, anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise would attract, uh, move together inward, um, uh, clockwise, clockwise would also attract, move inwards together, and then anti-clockwise and clockwise would, and clockwise and anti-clockwise would repel, move outward. So, now we have a copper ring, we're going to throw a copper ring into the rectangular, into the page, B-field region, and you can now apply um, the left-hand rule to find out where the copper ring would move. We threw it, no currents because no flux, since B-field is zero. Um, there's no flux because the B field is zero, lack of constants. So if there's a variation, variability leads to a generation in the flux. Because the you know, because uh, the B field is uniform, there's no flux, there's no change. And um, there's no current because no flux, since no magnetic field. Flux increases um, some of the B points into the page. And um, so I must move to create a B that offsets the flux. I'll move counterclockwise, anticlockwise to counter increase the flux. Flux is not changing. So, yeah, that's how it is. 
induced current would take place at 4 and it would take place at 2 it would not take place at 3 so yeah that's uh, that's now eddy currents eddy currents is one of my favorite topics because it uh, it, uh, it confuses students quite a lot it's linked to damping it link linked to uh it's linked to the concept and ideation of, uh, you know, um, wear and tear. Linked to the concept of wear and tear. Eddy currents are generated due to imperfections in the magnetic circuitry, uh, the B field, E field circuitry, and it leads. It's a bit of a leakage, bit of a heating, bit of a you know V squared over R, I squared R, and uh, you know it's 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 the regular imperfections uh, of the circuitry, and uh, human reaction errors, systematic errors, which lead to the generation of these currents, which is basically a concentric leakage. So the copper plates. Um, you know, if you place a copper plate um, in uh, from north, in between a north and south, you'll see um, it gets pulled to the right. Okay, and then if you use the right hand rule, because it, this is a generate generator setup, not a motor setup. So the you know you can see that the right hand rule, the field will be this way, and. Uh, So the field is from north to south, the, the thrust would be uh, upwards, and then um, the uh, uh, current would be out of the pitch, and that's how you apply it. And uh, the electric generators undergo Fleming's right hand rule, they don't, um, and motors uh, receive. Uh, Fleming's left hand rule treatment. So always remember generators RHR. Motors, F H uh, L H R, Fleur, and Fr. A motor converts E into M. A generator converts M into E. Remember this very very carefully. So, um, in a motor, um, the input uh, B field changes induces current which then causes uh, rotational kinetic energy then it allows locomotion to take place uh, whereas in a generator uh, the input of mechanical energy uh, which is you know let's just say you, you have a dynamo on top of a bicycle so you the chemical energy in your muscles glucose is converted into rot uh, kinetic energy rotational energy uh, rotational kinetic energy of the bike uh, gears and then which leads to the generation of electrical energy um, which uh, is emitted as light in a generator the shaft is rotated by some mechanical means such as an engine or a turbine and that leads to the induction of the resultant EMF uh, this is how you have to write in the exam leads to the generation of the resultant EMF wire uh, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, in, in 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 the coil. So, if the generator is connected to an external circuit uh, providing DC, the electrical current output, uh, electrical current is the output of the generator. So, what happens is, um, when um, so you're doing a movement, you've induced mechanical rotational kinetic energy movement that the generator is capitalizing upon and is connected to an outward circuit such as a bulb or a tungsten wire in nitrogen vacuum. Then, you know, you'll obviously see the current getting transmitted to that coil and the bulb would light up. If one end of the magnet is plunged in and out of the coil, of wire, the induced voltage alternates in direction, which is V equals V naught, uh, uh, two pi, uh, uh, sine two pi ft, um, and um, um, you know, and the B field strength in, inside the coil is increased. The induced voltage in the coil is directed in one way. When the magnet, when the B field strength diminishes, um, because every magnet degenerates over time, every magnet will become smaller. Uh, you know, weaker over time, so you have to, you have to, like, uh, place it in vicinity of another magnet, or you have to place it in the freezer for it to regenerate or resuscitate its magnetization, magnetic permittivity, magnetic 
ability, magnetic magnetization um, uh, power back to a bit of a uh, as 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 close to uh, original as it was. So putting it in the freezer helps. Um, when the voltage changes direction, so does the current. All right. So voltage and current change are homodirectional. They are homodirectional voltage and current, whereas. Uh, power and voltage, power and current are not. Power is a scalar quantity; it it doesn't have any direction. So, um, and uh, resistance is a static property of material property. So, it doesn't have a direction either. Lenz's law basically states that moving B field will induce a current by inducing flux, and then that current will end up producing its own concentric B field around it. As it moves in the circuit, which will then oppose the direction of the B field flux. Remember this very, very carefully. Repeat it. A look back, and uh, so whenever there's a circuit completion and 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 um, there's a B field generated, and that would generate current. That current would then uh, have a concentric B field around itself in its field, and that that would oppose the 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 um, that would be opposite to the direction, the change of the direction in which the B B B flux is taking place. That's what you need to realize. So it's counter counter counter, and the greater the frequency of the field change, the greater the induced voltage. That's you know. So that's how you utilize it for motion. That's how you utilize these engines and generators for motion, high high tier motion. Um, frequency of the induced alternating voltage V equals V naught um, sine two pi ft uh, equals the frequency of the chaining B field within the loop. So it's it's again, all of it is happening as a system within a system, enclave within an enclave, um, but. All of it is summative. I total would be I three equals I one plus I two, and Kirchhoff's law and Peer's laws dictate what's happening here. Hall effect is happening. Eddy currents are taking place. But overall, uh, Kirchhoff has successfully explained that all of the system is closed. Uh, any wastage which takes place is through. Uh, eddy currents or heat so rather than moving the magnet it is more practical to move the coil it is less expensive to move the coil as well this is the best accomplished uh, by rotating a coil in the stationary b field this arrangement is a generator a generator converts me into ee so when the loop of the wire is rotated in b field there's a change in the number of b field lines within the loop and they're getting cut off um as the um, and so you know at the angle at which the greatest number of lines are cut off is the angle which uh, it rotates over to and the cycle continues and um, the voltage induced by the generator alternates the current alternates everything's alternating the ac and ac current and then the current changes magnitude again and you know it, it, that's how the motor carries on the generators used in, used in power plants are much more complex than the model discussed here so please remember this um, huge coils make made up of many many loops of wire copper wire uh, wrapped around on an iron core laminated iron core to make an armature which much like the armature of a motor uh, they rotate in the very strong B fields of powerful electromagnets so these aren't natural magnets these are electromagnets these are mag uh, iron pieces of iron that are supplied with electricity to be converted into an electromagnet so a temporary magnet used in forklifting lifting of cars and whatnot the armature is connected externally to an assembly of paddle wheels called a turbine energy from the wind of falling water can be used to produce rotation rotational kinetic energy of the turbine but most commercial generators are driven by moving steam so steam is doing the work that was supposed to be doing, done by the circuit so that's how where the steam increases the efficiency by a bit so using a fossil fuel or a nuclear fuel is used as the energy source for the steam to complete the circuit and um you know this is the basic powerpoint presentation diagram which i showed you in the lecture it's important to emphasize that an energy source of some kind is required to operate a generator to keep it going so some fraction of energy from the source usually comes from some type of fuel 
um, which helps uh, to convert the chemical energy of the fuel into uh, into mechanical energy, which then drives the turbine, and then generate to convert the rotational kinetic energy into electrical energy. This then is uh, carried over wires to distant places via step step up transformer. Then uh, gets a step down, and then for domestic use, it gets to a step down transformer, and you know it's a form of energy that must have a source. So this is the diagram. Please take a screenshot, and uh, yeah. Theories, you know, this is the damn theory. The gravity is uh, used to help out the procedures. Fuel, fossil fuels, and gravity helps, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Heidel, Heidel's are out of fashion now because England is investing more and more um, into nuclear, which I'm happy about. I want more investment in nuclear rather than uh, Heidel projects, which are very uh, spacious. They consume a lot of space end up taking up quite a, a large area and uh, you know the efficiency is quite lower than that of an npp so yeah and this is the end of the presentation um i hope you understood please rewind it and 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 i may appear to be babbling but no i'm trying to tell you about what happens when you pull the magnet in out and uh, the the part where i spoke of um, clockwise, anti-clockwise, that part needs to be rewound, and you need to make notes out of that part, that's what the questions pertain to, thank you very much.